Hello, and welcome back to the ICU doc. This is Tamaris Baronos, and here's another lecture on perioperative and critical care transthoracic echo. In today's presentation, we will talk about the fractional shortening, which is a method to estimate the global left ventricular ejection fraction, how to acquire the view, and how to make the measurements. The fractional shortening is measured at the parasthenal long axis view. As a matter of fact, you can also use the parasthenal short axis view to measure it, but in this presentation, we'll just use the parasthenal long axis view. You will also need M mode on your echo. And if you have an atomic M mode as an option on your ultrasound, that's even better to eliminate error if you're cutting the ventricle at an angle. Let's talk about some of the limitations of this method. Fractional shorting correlates pretty well with a global left ventricular function. In patients with asymmetric and large left ventricle or right ventricular regional motion abnormalities or conduction defects, this may not be the case. Another limitation is that the endocardium is not always clearly visible, so you might have some error when you calculate it. After you get a good parasternal long axis view, you have to select M mode on your ultrasound. You want to place the M mode cursor right at the tip of the anterior mitral leaflet, which is right here, or just below it. You also want to be directing your M mode cursor between the papillary and the mitral valve. In this particular case, because the heart looks a little bit slanted, we used an atomic M mode, which is this green cursor. If you were just using simple M mode, then you would have been cutting the heart like this, where the dotted line is. After you get a good M mode tracing, you want to start making some measurements. You want to measure the endocardium from the end of diastole to the end of systole. So what you're basically measuring is the percentage decrease of the left ventricular end diastolic diameter that occurs by the end of systole. Before we analyze the numbers, I just want to show you which equation we're going to be using for the fractional shortening. So let's break down the equation. So it tells us that the left ventricular fractional shortening is equal to the left ventricular internal diameter at the end of diastole minus the left ventricular internal diameter at the end of systole divided by the left ventricular internal diameter at the end of diastole times 100. Let's go back to our patient and see the numbers that we got. So for the left ventricular internal diameter at diastole, we found it to be 5.1 centimeters. The left ventricular internal diameter at the end of systole is 3.6 centimeters. And by using the equation that I showed you earlier, you can calculate the fractional shortening. This ultrasound machine actually calculates it on its own, and they found it to be 29%. In this table, we're looking at the normal values for the left ventricular shortening. So if the endocardial left ventricular shortening is less than 27% in females and less than 25% in males, these are markers of left ventricular dysfunction. In this patient, the fractional shortening is 29% and that was a male so this is a normal fractional shortening for this patient. Also note that this machine also calculates the ejection fraction by using the take holds method. The take holds method uses the internal diameter to calculate volume. The take holds method is not the best way to calculate ejection fraction since it makes a lot of geometric assumptions about the left ventricle and the only variable that you're actually putting into the equation is the diameter. So there's a lot of source of error if you're just using it simply to calculate ejection fraction. Nevertheless, we should take everything under consideration when we're evaluating a patient. And this concludes the lecture on the fractional shortening. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you check out our website, YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter to stay updated when new videos come out. If you like the lectures, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and share.